In this video, I'll talk to you about uh, finishing off this piece with um, uh, some border work. Uh, I don't always put borders on things, but I'll put one on this just uh, so that I can uh, show you how to do it if you want to try your own. Um, I'll also probably brush some gold along the edges. Um, we'll see how it goes. I laid out some materials here. Uh, I don't always do this. In fact, I rarely do this. I usually just pull out one or two brushes and that's it. But um, I pulled out a variety of brushes here so that you could see that we could um, use any one of them or all of them within the border and get different shapes and sizes of, of strokes. Um, I've got a white chalk pencil. I've got a compass here, which uh, is really important for when I do my borders. This flat brush I'll use to probably rub the gold on the edges. Put out some ink here. Um, again, um, I go through stages. Sometimes I'll use this and sometimes I, I won't. If you want very fine lines that are relatively opaque with the gold, um, the ink works well. When you dilute the acrylic paint to get it thin enough to get really fine lines, uh, you'll find that they don't show up well enough. And then if you have to go over them, well, that's darn near impossible to do and do a good job. Um, any gold acrylic paint will work. Um, this is an old bottle I have that I'm using up um, and I've already added some water to it so it's been it's diluted or it's a thin consistency so that hopefully it will really um, flow off of my liner brush. There's um, white transfer paper here. There's a piece of tracing paper. This is a small piece. Sometimes I use bigger pieces, sometimes small pieces. This happens to be what I have where I am today. And uh, a ruler. I don't often use a ruler, but for some of you, it uh, gives you a little bit more confidence when you measure. I usually just eye things up. So these are um, the basic tools that I would use. Of course, you might need some paper towel and some water to rinse your brush out or uh, water to further dilute your paint. Um, but basically, this, this would get you through any kind of border. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, give myself some guidelines and um, I think I'll start by trying to find the center of the piece. Now you could do that by measuring from side to side. This is about 16 and 3 quarters. You could divide that in half. Um, or I can see that the tray itself offers me some good suggestions on how to get to the center. There are um, two points here and I could take a ruler and just carefully go from corner to corner and that would pretty much be close enough to tell me where uh, the center of the tray is and if I'm out by a little doesn't really matter. Um, the other thing is is I have this pattern over here and so this kind of tells me that that's the center of this space and if I just look at this kind of line it up from here, I can pretty much find, maybe that's a little over here, the center here. So um, this is just a start, just gives me a bit of guidelines. Um, as I said, I've got these little points on the surface itself, which are kind of interesting and can help me to build my border. Um, so the first thing I want to do is give myself some uh, more guidelines. And I'm just going to take my compass and put the point against this ridge here, which is kind of handy, and throw in some lines all around my piece, like so. Very easy. Not when you try and do it with your left hand, but... Um, and that gives me a start. For my border so now I just stretch this and I don't measure just stretch it keep it the same width and I'll do the same thing again and you can do this as many times as you want and put as many lines as you want whatever you think the thickness of the border is that you're going to desire um, I often put a bunch of lines in end up not using them whoops, goof there, and then um, have to 
have to erase them, but with the chalk pencil it's easy. So let me just throw another one in here. I don't want it that wide. This is not my regular compass. I left my regular compass at home and I'm away right now. So it doesn't work quite as well. Quite as well as the one that I'm used to. Well, it doesn't work well at all on this. So this is just giving me some guidelines. So I'm just going to put the three on. I'm not going to do any more than that because I want to make this a short video. But as I said, you could put as many lines down as you want. Now I have to put intersecting lines. So I have to divide this all up. And there's um, a variety of ways to do that. I could just eye this up. I could go from here to here and say, oh, you know, I think that's halfway and oh, I think that's halfway again, and you know what? That's probably how I would do this. Another way is to take a piece of, um, of tracing paper and to fold it evenly, like so. Sometimes I use a round piece, then I just fold it again. And you can see that if I lay this down now where the center is, it would pretty much give me my points. Or I can put, I can f continue to fold it. And you can fold it as many times again as you can. You have to make sure you keep it sharp, the edges sharp. That's probably enough for now. So if I take this, and actually, if I want to get it right in the center, I can put my compass through here and then put it on the little space there, the little dot that I already created, and hold this down, and that will give me connecting lines that radiate. So I have a choice. I can do straight lines. For, and make the border squarish, or I can do radiating lines. You can see it would be quite different if I carried this line through. So um, on this piece, I don't think I'll use the radiating lines. You'll see, what, I just want to show you what that means. So your border would be a totally different shape than if I just use straight lines intersecting around the border. But for the sake of today, um, I think I'll just guess the centers of these. So I'll just do this and then I'll go in the middle and in the middle. Now I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I will do it after I've done the video. So over here, I'm here. About center would be there. About center would be there. And then I'll divide those up again. So I would go around the entire piece. I'll leave that corner on an angle. Um, I think I'll leave these about the same. So these are obviously a little bit narrower spaces in between than what it is on the side. Um, but that's fine. It, it, it will work out just fine. So on the other side of my tray, I have um, some guidelines that look, I don't know, something like this. I've got three going this way. There's uh, that line that came from the corner of the tray. And then there's um, three lines on this side as well. And then I did intersecting lines this way, like so. Make this one, I'll put one more row here. So that's what I have. To work with on the other side. So I'll just show you quickly. Um, I've got uh, paint in this one and ink in this one. I use bottle caps when I do this because I can put the paint in, it's already thinned out, it's diluted, and I can mix it around with my brush and I can make sure I've got lots of paint on my brush. So let's just, um, this is paint, let's just look at this and I'll show you um, 
some of your options. So a stroke that you might use could be as simple as a straight line. That line you could kind of curve it a bit one way or you could curve it the other or you could, you know, curve it a lot. Um, you could do comma-like strokes. You could do dots. Uh, what else could you do? Um, you could do like little S's and then you can join them up and so on. Now, um, that's using one brush. This is ink over here. Let's just have a look at this. With the ink, if I go to a smaller, whoops, smaller liner, you can see that I can do similar lines, but they can be quite a bit thinner, and I've still got about the same amount of um, opaqueness that I had with the, with the paint. If I change brushes, so let's just pull up something different here. This is a small filbert. Again, trying to make sure I've got enough paint in my brush. So again, I could do similar things with a filbert, but obviously I'm going to get different, different shapes and they're going to be larger. Um, sometimes I do little flowers like a head, two arms, and two legs, and they're that simple. Um, if What else have I got here? I've got a round brush. Again, I'm just going to make different size strokes. I can go, you know, large instead of just doing tiny strokes. So um, whatever brush you choose will work fine. Um, and you can see that these are, well, I call them strokes. They're not really very good strokes, are they? They're more like marks. This uh, gold paint is really diluted. It's almost diluted too much. I might have to go get another different bottle. Um, but uh, you'll see how this works once we get going. You just take a combination of any of these marks, let's call them, and you put them together and that's how we're going to build our border. So I'm going to flip this tray over and um, get started on the other side. So here we are uh, with the tray and it's full of guidelines and um, we talked a little bit about the strokes. So I'm just going to start to paint. Now don't overthink this if you think that you can sit down and pre-design all of this and know exactly what it's going to look like, um, that's a lot of work. I, I don't even know like who would have the patience to do that. I, I certainly wouldn't. But all I know is if I have this grid to work with and I take those marks or strokes and I just begin to put them on this grid all in the same spot, at some point in time or another, I'll have a border. So I'm just going to start. Um, this line meets this one. Two lines intersect there. And I'm just going to put some dots so you can see in here. And they're not spaced out very well, but when the border's all done, you don't notice. So I'm just putting these here so you can see where the lines intersect. Now you'll also see the... If I just take this spot here and go up, put a curved line, meet the first line inside, come down and meet the spot. I've already started my border. Once you decide on one mark, then what you do is just continue around the piece and go to all the same locations on the grid and just begin to build your border. Now I'm not going to do this whole thing obviously, although it doesn't really take very long. Um, so up here, if I did that, it would look like this. You can see having the paint in this little bottle cap helps. Just make sure you keep it stirred. Makes it easy to load the brush. So I'll just put some there. Now they're not the same size, but I don't care. Okay, let's do something else. Um, let's... Uh, uh, let's see now. 
Oh, I know. Let's let's do a curved line from here up to the, where these lines intersect. So that would be along this top line. So if you watch, so I'll put one here. Now that's not very difficult, is it? And once you've made that decision, you don't have to make another one until you get all the way around the tray. That's my dog scratching the noise that you hear. Sorry about that, but... Um, so again, I would go all around the tray and do the same thing. So over here, that would be, I'm just going to make sure I get them the same direction. I'll start at the top and come down because it's easier for me to paint it that way. And sometimes once you get going with this, um, before you get to the other end of the tray, you get all the way around, you're already knowing what the next stroke is going to be. I, I'm going to put one like this and just go the other way. So now I've got, I've already got a bit of a border underway and I've only had to make three little decisions, really weren't big ones, they're just all curved lines. And I'll just do a bit on the top of this one too, so now that would look like this. Um, I don't see as well as I used to, so trying to just leave this tray stationary so I can do this for you um, doesn't make it so good for me. So having done that, I'm going to do the same thing that I did down here. And I'm going to put a curved stroke along the top. So I've just used the same marks, but when I combine them, you can start to see that that already gives me kind of a pretty border almost looks I guess you'd call it maybe like a chain and the fact that my lines aren't equidistant by the time I get this all done everybody always looks at my border and says oh they're they're so perfect well they're so far from perfect <laughs> unbelievable so over here I've got this to contend with I'm just going to put as if I had half a, just do the same strokes, but they're just on an angle. Do you see that? So I'll just connect it that way at the corner. So um, what else could I do on this? I could add some comma strokes now. What if I put, uh, oh, let's see, let's, let's do a little comma stroke in here. So put one there, which means one goes here and one goes here. You can see how quickly your border begins to build. Not my best work, is it? I don't see very well here. Um, just move around here so I can get at this a little bit better. These really aren't even comma strokes. So having put one on that side, what I would probably do is come back and do the same on the other side. So now I've got, you get enough strokes on here, you don't see the ones that are really bad. So over here, that's, in here. Now you can take your time with this and do absolutely gorgeous borders. I must admit this one's not, my stroke work is pretty bad today, but that's okay. Um, I could also do something like a little stroke at the top here that just comes down straight on that line. kind of straight. And uh, I talked about, I didn't talk about cross hatching before, but I'll often do some cross hatching within 
a space. So for example, maybe inside here I could pull some lines. Now again, do all like things at once. Don't try and cross hatch this and then go back and or or do the opposite side. Just do one one direction first. And then you can go back and do the other direction. That one kind of filled in. This is the ink I'm using, by the way, so I just thought it showed up better on the camera than the paint did. At any rate, that just, I'm not um, going to finish this. Uh, I'll finish this off camera. And um, hopefully the best of it, the rest of it will look a little bit better when I can move this tray out, around and get at it from an angle that I'd like to be painting at. Um, so I'm going to finish this, and then uh, I'll take a picture of it and add it to this video when it's done. And then um, I'm going to glaze this piece, and if I don't like the border when I'm all done, you'll see that I'll use glazing to try and satisfy myself. So that's it for building borders. They're pretty simple. You just have to not worry about it. Don't get too excited about things being perfect. Just get it started, put a mark down, then put that mark all around the tray, then choose another mark. And it's not long, not that many combinations before uh, you've got a real border. So have a go at it. If you have any questions, of course, you can um, message me. So I've uh, finished the border all the way around. Not thrilled with it, um, but it'll do for now. And I've decided that I want to um, add a little bit of gold to the outside rim of the tray. So I'm just going to use a flat brush and uh, a piece of paper towel. So I've just got my towel here and I've got my flat brush now this is uh, like a dry brush method but I never ever use my brush really perfectly dry I always wet it first and then remove the water out of the brush so that down in around the ferrule it's always wet um, so this is some gold paint and I'm just going to lay my brush into the paint now on the paper towel you'll see I'm going to get rid of most of that paint so very little paint in the brush. And what I'm going to do is just draw it over the flat, the high spots of the, of this edge of the trim around the tray. And you see my, my brush is like this. It's not like this, right? You're going to use it on its flat side. And when I go to reload, I can probably reload from that spot. Well, I'm going to need more paint, that's for sure. You want to run the paint all in one direction. And it doesn't matter if you get some areas where it's, where it's um, heavier and it's kind of filled in. That's okay. Kind of an antiquing method I guess and the nice part about this is if you don't have enough down probably better to do a little bit and then come back you can always add more just turn my brush so it's flat here that's the nice thing about these trays I've got three styles of these trays and each one of them you can leave the rim a little bit rougher don't sand it and then you can do this kind of a nice finish around the edge and it's kind of painless but looks good on the tray there's a little 
rim around the edge here. I don't know if I'm going to try and go over it or not. Uh, I'll maybe do the corners. Now that's kind of rough, but um, it's a little bit thick in here, but I could sand that down a bit maybe later if I'm totally unhappy with it. But you can go around the edges and kind of even out some of the paint if you want. And if you've got one blotch, make sure you've got lots of blotches. That way that one doesn't stand out. And I think um, that's about it for the trim. I have, you'll notice I put a lot of little dots in here on the border and there was an absolute reason for that, that um, it's so uneven all the way around that I put the dots in and then it kind of confuses the eye. You don't, you don't then see all of, uh, all of the differences. And um, when I glaze this, I'm probably going to deepen some of that anyway so you're probably not going to see it this um the little specks of i know some of you're looking at this and panicking because i've got gold paint on this um uh, spilled onto here but um it's because i this is painted in oils i can just go back and any of the acrylic that's on here will just either wipe off while it's wet or i can almost pick it off so i'm not too concerned about it so um, that's about it for trimming the tray. Uh, next, I'm going to show you glazing in the next video, and uh, I think that'll finish things off.